you know, defensively, hey, the one thing that we asked him to do last year, he did a great job, was he rebounded the ball on the defensive end, which was, was big for us. And we're, we, we need somebody to uh, continue with that as well. How difficult is it to, I, you know, we ask this every year, to lose somebody who's a great point guard, and we say, where are you going to get the assists? Well, you, you lose somebody in the wing, whatever. Nonetheless, you look at the stat sheet, and you think, well, 20 points a game. Mm -hmm. How do you make that up? Well, I, I think that uh, we get the same answer I always give to uh, collectively. Use that from last year. Yeah, exactly. Uh, collectively, I think guys uh, have, have got to score more. I think that you know the one thing you saw last year was guys had games where they they showed that they could put the ball in the basket. You know, uh, Sam at a Penn State. You know, Lenzel's done it. Aaron's done it. But Quentin's done it. Um, Shannon's done it. And I think it needs to be more of a, of a well-rounded. We got to have a little bit more of a flow to our offense. It's, it's something we've tried to put a, a big premium on in the off season was was shooting the basketball and and. and Getting better offensively, skill-wise. I, I think so. I, I think um, you know we're, we're never going to go away from our defense in in terms of uh, you know I, I think that was probably the best thing we maybe did last year collectively as a group was was team defense and and our guys knew that I, I thought at the end of the year they uh, took pride in that I, I think you know th those are the building blocks that you have um, you know I, style wise yeah I, I think that uh, the, the great thing that we saw going into the offseason was we had uh, a few different ways we could play last year. And a lot of that lends itself to the same thing this year, even with what we lost with Evan and, and Deshaun. Um, but the, the pieces are, are still similar from, from LeQuentin to Mark and, and, and what those guys are capable of doing in that Deshaun Thomas type role. Fresh year, but right, does the way last year ended, does that turn and carry over for Bring that up because you've got a better lineup than most of those guys played in that game. Yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, it, it has been brought up because I, I think that, you know, you, you were on the verge of uh, going to your second straight Final Four, which is very, very rare in college basketball today. Um, the way we played for 30 minutes of the game was at that time particular juncture was very uncharacteristic of us. And, and I think, you know, the opponent had a lot to do with it. They, they played a, a tremendous game and we're playing at a high level at that time. But, um, you know, those are the, the, the type of things that you want guys to think about in the off season of, of um, you know, having an opportunity in front of you and, and maybe not playing your best when you need it to. Speaking of last year, uh, maybe the way two years ago Deshaun's NCAA tournament run helped you propel him confidence-wise. How does what some of the things that he was able to do during the postseason last year kind of help him? Because it's a different four now, but it's still one that can be lethal scoring. Right. I, I think. Um, you know, LeQuentin finished that season uh, on, a, on a high note. I, I think that he had finally hit his stride in, in terms of, of having a better understanding of, of what we needed him to do, how we needed to do it. You know, one, one of the biggest things I've noticed thus far is um, he, he's got a, a much broader vision offensively than, than maybe he's had in the past. And, uh, you know, a, a lot of the turnovers uh, that were created that he had last year, uh, you know, we haven't seen as many of those this year. He, he's, he's more patient. He's seeing things. And, and, you know, sometimes I think, you know, that that's the jump from freshman, sophomore, sophomore, junior type of deal. When Sebra and Samir came here, we thought, well, you know, he's going to have a great two years. He's going to get it all of a sudden. And now he's getting to be a veteran. Mm -hmm. Is is he what he has been, or do you see that he can make dramatic improvement on that? Well, I, I think that, uh, you know, the, the one thing, is, is Amir has shown throughout the, his time here, um, you know, a freshman at Kansas when Jared was down, a freshman at, at South Carolina when Jared was down again four minutes into the game. Um, I, I think what, what we're looking for, and I've said this before, is, is the consistency over greatness. Give, just give us consistent, solid basketball. And, and you know, I, I think Amir is in uh, probably the best shape of his life. I, you know, the biggest thing with him, and, and we talk about it, is uh, he, he can't operate in a comfort zone. And, and I think from the standpoint of 
uh, pushing himself and, and making plays. But you know, I've been very pleased with his his offensive production thus far in practice, and and uh, uh, you know his, his defense awareness is getting better. He's still blocking a lot of shots, but we just we need him to have just more of a more of a present to to plug the middle for us. Consistency over greatness is kind of something that Len Zeldin just implied a minute ago about just how he could score 28 in one game, and six in the next. What was it about Lenzel's game that you would like to see kind of changed or improved this year? And is it kind of one of those things where you would much rather see him get 15 to 17 a game rather than 29 one game and 69? Yeah, I, I think from uh, Lenzel's standpoint, uh, you know, obviously, you know, he shoots a, a decent percentage from three, but he's, he's had games where he's had a hot week, kind of a cool week. I, I want him to be a, a very, very consistent three point shooter. Um, you know he's he's rebounded the ball well, and and the good thing there is when he rebounds, he can get out and, and lead transition. Uh, and I've told him I've seen him throw some passes I hadn't seen him throw since he was in high school. Uh, in in terms of, of having a, a broader vision, you know, a higher assist to turnover ratio, those are the type of things that we need from Lenzel. The two, the two freshmen, uh, Cam and Mark, uh, after what you've seen here a couple of weeks, how do you figure they might? Quite into your rotation, what roles do you kind of see for those guys? Well, I, I think this been very, very pleased with with both of them. Um, almost a little bit taken back. Um, you know, Cam has been out. Cam's sick right now. Um, don't know for sure when we're going to get him back. He's been out a couple days and and uh, uh, strep throat type stuff. But uh, you know, Mark has has been. Mark has a great feel for the game of basketball and, and in terms of cutting and moving without the ball, he finishes well, he shot the ball really well from behind the arc and, and you know, I, I've been, like I said, pleasantly surprised with what he has um, brought to the table thus far. It, it's, it's been probably a little bit more than I thought it was going to be. With four starters back coming off a 29-win season, granted you did lose a lot in the leading scorer and the Big Ten leading scorer and uh, you know, key reserve in heaven, but what are what's reasonable expectations for this year? I mean, do you do you feel good about your chances that you can do it do it again this year? Yeah, I, I think I'll be honest, Rusty. From the standpoint, and I was just down on the elliptical machine. I was working out, and I was asking myself, what type of questions are they going to ask me? And and that one came to my mind, oh, and and I wanted to have a good answer for you. Um, you got to work a little bit more, though. Yeah, it, it's it, it's funny because I think expectation-wise, and, and this is what I thought of when I was down there. Um, coming out of yesterday's practice, there's about four things for an October 11th practice that we got to get better at. I don't know uh, if if I could give a, a a true projection or expectation for this team just yet. Um, I think they, that we have a chance to have a really, really good basketball team. I, I think I've, I've loved the energy, I've loved the cohesiveness of us. It's early, you know. There's going to be ups, there's going to be downs to a season, but um, you know, and, and we've talked about it with what we lost, uh, but with the guys we have coming back and, and getting them into their roles, uh, adjusting our offense, adjusting our defense to, to who we've got. Um, I'd say this: I'm very excited about the season. Is there any, who's the one player on this team, coach, uh, that can replace that scoring output, the Sean Ball? Did you have to have that, or is there enough guys on the team that you don't really have to have that one guy? Well, I, you know, you always like that guy uh, because when you when you think back, Deshaun got us a lot of uh, big, important baskets. But I, I, I think that we will have, you know, a, a, a lot of times we we looked, we looked, we looked, we looked for Deshaun. Uh, you know, the one thing I think we've got right now going is a little bit more of a flow to, to what we're doing to our offense. Now, do I want to trade that for him? I don't know about that, but uh, you know, I, I don't want to label a guy and, and say, hey, you're Deshaun Thomas, you're going to do what he did. Um, I, I think it's just more of maybe some, some different variables to our offense and what we're trying to do. And, and, uh, and I think you'll see that the guys have gotten better offensively. Who's that unsung hero, so to speak, that uh, we don't know about yet that, uh, that you got your eye on? Mm, for logical purposes, I, I haven't picked one. Because uh, I'm, I'm hoping that everybody has a little bit of that in them in, in terms of, of what we're trying to do. I, I think we will be deep. I think we'll be able to play a lot of guys. Um, and, and, and with that said, you know, we don't have a ton of guys on scholarship, but 
I think you would all agree if I said we were going to play nine guys, you'd be like, gosh, that's real deep. Yes. Um, but I, I think from a standpoint of where we are today and, and how much time we've got going forward, um, we're probably a little bit ahead of schedule in, in possibly defining roles earlier than we have in the past. You know, we may not have to wait till December to see how we do that sort of thing. We may be able to get to it quicker. Regarding Q and the expectations he's going to have on him, now that he's here for his third season, how equipped is he to tune that out and listen to him? Right. Well, I, I think the greatest thing Q has going for him is well, Quentin Ross has never started a game for Ohio State. So any type of expectations that could be placed on him, um, you know, <laughs> hey, crack the starting lineup uh, and, and go from there. I, I, I say that kind of... Right. Yeah. If you figure it out, let me know, okay? Um, no, I, I think from the, the standpoint with LaQuentin, that's one of the, the biggest things because his, his entire playing career, uh, has a, a lot has been based on uh, potential. And, and he and I have had that discussion. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's time to be productive, but probably most important, it's time to be consistent. And, and that, to me, would supersede any expectations that anybody on the outside could possibly put on him. Um, you know, it, it's got to be something internal. It's got to be internal within uh, what our program needs him to do. I think if he thinks that way, if he does that, uh, good thing. Um, I'm not, he, he my hand and I said, this feels stronger. Right. He says it's an attitude. <laughs> What's the attitude you want him to have? Yeah, you know, I, I think that uh, Amir has a, a, a more confident approach to himself. Uh, we touched on it earlier. I, I, I think the biggest thing that, that I am on Amir and, and what this team needs is, is Amir can't play comfortable. He can't play in a comfort zone. And, and I say that from the standpoint of, um, you know, maybe it's, it's shorter burst of, of a three-minute, four-minute segment, get a break, and then go again. But um, you know, he's he's shown some very good things in practice. Uh, the thing that uh, that I love is is Trey McDonald is is pushing him every single day in practice, and 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 I like that. I I, I hope that that's going to breed some competition between those two. Someone like Aaron Kraft, who's played so much basketball over the last three years, how do you challenge him? What is the challenge for him for this season? Well, I don't know if you know anybody like this in your life. If there's one person that you don't have to challenge, it's Aaron Kraft. And, and you know, you, you look at, at, hey, he's won 94 games here. He's, he's been on his freshman year a, a team that was maybe the best team in college basketball that was upset in the Sweet 16 to a Final Four to a Elite Eight. Um, he's special. He's unique in, in that regard. He, he wants to win, and, and, and he wants to win the right way, and, and that is playing great team basketball. He wants to represent this university the best that he can. Um, <laughs> Since his freshman year, the second game of the year at Florida, I've never thought one time about motivating him. Now, there are times where I, I may push buttons, send texts, you know, do whatever to guys to maybe get them ready, but he's never on that list for me. How has he grown? How has he matured? Well, I, I think this. Aaron has... Uh, he, he's more uh, vocal to what he's saying. He's... he's in, in my mind, he's always seen the right thing, and now he's letting know. I, I, I've seen him uh, throughout the course of, of what we've done this year. He, he has relationships with guys throughout the course of the game uh, that a lot of people may not be able to see. Um, but it's, it's the little things, I think, in that regard that he's doing that has, has, has made him even more of an impactful player in terms of what he's going to bring to the team this year. Are you confident or are you hopeful that this team's going to shoot better? 
Uh, I love both. Uh, you know, I, I think, I, I believe we're, we're a better shooting basketball team. Percentages say we're a better shooting basketball team. And um, it, with what we're doing right now, um, it, it's, it's been a priority for us. Uh, I, I think from the standpoint of that helps us, and I think our guys know that helps us. We're, we, we've put a, uh, a large premium on, hey, we, we've got to make at least open shots and a couple difficult. We don't have Deshaun to make the, the, the challenge shots, but uh, these guys know how important that is for them. You think we'll go into the season, you think teams will try to find out right away whether they're capable of if you go pack it up? Yeah, you know, we, we hopefully we, we see a little bit of everything, um, but yeah, I, I hope so, uh, just from the standpoint, because I think that's probably more Big Ten-ish in terms of, of what we're going to see when we get to the Big Ten. Sam said that, uh, you said too, that you can probably use that small line for some ice. Mm -hmm. Think you can hurt teams more with it than they might be able to hurt size of Yeah, you know, from what we saw last year when we used it, 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 it obviously was was very effective. Um, you know, yeah, yeah, and, and you know, it, it probably. Uh, Sean was in the other day to watch practice. I didn't show it to him as he was watching practice. But, uh, you know, I, I think what you got when you have that team is, is great quickness, uh, great defense paralysis in, in terms of, of guys moving around. Um, and then offensively, you, you've got guys that can shoot it, guys that can drive it, guys that can pass it. And we've got more of an advantage of, of trying, you know, sort of uh, creating mismatch post ups down there. Do you expect to start the season with your guards the way you did at the end of last season with Shannon and Manzel pretty much getting about the same amount of minutes alternating with Aaron at the one and two? Uh, you've got another. Yeah. You've got Amadeo. Yeah. Uh, you know, Mark can kind of slide. Guys can move. Um, you know. Shannon and Aaron together is, is, is a very good combination. Um, it, it's going to be fun to, to kind of piece it together, to be honest with you, because those guys are taking great pride uh, in, in the things that they need to do. And, and, you know, when I did it Shannon's freshman year, Aaron's sophomore year, when we played them late in the year together, and I used the phrase, we had two attackers out there. Uh, you know, we, we could be potentially with, with three out there in terms of ball screens and, and you know, that sort of thing. Can you start the point guard? Mm -hmm. Will you? We'll see. I mean, I, I'll say this. Both guys are playing at a, a very, very high level right now. And, you know, that's the one thing that, that I love about a backcourt right now. you got two seniors and, and a junior. And, and Sam even being a, a, a junior, you know, Amadeo, a, a sophomore. I'm... Uh, we haven't had that a lot here, and uh, you know, hopefully that experience pays off for us. So, how many times have you mentioned the Wichita State game to these guys since? I mean, since you started. I mean, does that come up how close you were and put you, pra you know, yeah. practice harder, maybe <laughs> a few points here. I mean, right. It, you know, you think that drives guys to be that close to, to the Final Four again and come up just. Yeah, I, I think in today's society, most are on to the next, the next thing. Um, how many have I brought it up? Maybe on one hand, um, you know, a team meeting as we broke camp last summer. Uh, maybe when something's not going well in practice, you know, oh, here we are again. But I, you know, honestly, I, I think from the standpoint of, of um, when. It, those things, guys are, are more consumed with what's going forward than they are behind them. Now, Aaron said he still remembers plays that he made in high school when they didn't win, didn't win games. Right. Got this. I don't know if that's normal. But oh, it is. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. I think that's that's part of being an athlete where you can. Rec I mean, I. 
Yeah, I'll give you a perfect example. This is not for your story, obviously, but we had a guy in who was a NBA scout yesterday for practice, and he had played at Atlantic 10 school when I was at Xavier. And he says, you probably don't remember, but we beat you. And I said, no, I remember. We, they called seven charges in the first half on us. There was a side out of bounds with 30 seconds over. They said, we took the ball out of your hands, and they fouled David West out of the game with four minutes to go on a, on a BS call. And he goes, you do remember that. <laughs> I said, yeah. I remember it all, uh, but yeah, no, I think that is something that you know guys guys do remember. But um, you know, it's it's hey, we can't change the past. We gotta we gotta move forward. Speaking of NBA scouts, can Aaron play in the NBA? Uh, I think he can. Um, you know, you you look a lot of NBA teams like to carry three point guards, and. Um, you know, I, I just, I, I think what he has done, the, the one thing about Aaron Kraft is he wins. And, and there's a huge premium in my mind for, for guys that do that. Uh, you know, he, he's played a lot of different roles for us this year. We're obviously going to need him to score a, you know, a little bit more this year, and uh, I sure hope so. I mean, he's not prototype anything. He's not a great shooter, but I mean, he defends at, at that level, right? There, there's none better. Um, I mean, he is, uh, I'll say this, and he won't get a vote for National Defender of the Year. He's the best defender in college basketball and, and has been for the last couple of years. And, um, but yeah, uh, I, I, I hope that, that that works out for him. When Mike Conley's in here, it's probably when you're not allowed to watch. Mm -hmm. Because Eric's right. talked about how that's made up mm -hmm. in the past. And obviously, Mike is a top NBA point guard, so that would be Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, honestly, I've never seen them go head to head against each other, but uh, no, I, you know, Aaron loves a good challenge and, and, and he's cerebral enough that he's always learning. And, and I don't know if there's too many better right now than, than to learn from, from Mike than Mike. I want to ask about Aaron. Uh, he's been here three years, he's been a leader most of that time. Yeah. What do you challenge him to do that he hasn't done in that regard now that he's a senior? Uh, he is a leader. I mean, what, what well, you know, I, I, I talked about this a second ago, but what, what I've seen Aaron doing more of this year throughout the practices that we've had, um, he's, he's more connected uh, with guys throughout the, the, the possession, throughout the game. And, and um, it's, it's been like he and LaQuentin Ross right now have a, a, a unique bond on the floor, which is, is great. Uh, you know, he and Shannon, when they play together in practice, uh, are – like, hey, it's it's on, and 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 I like that about what what Aaron's bringing to the table in that regard. Because you you look at, uh, you know, just everybody he's been here with, uh, in his time, he's been with some great players on some great teams, and and now this is kind of you know he and Lenzel's team. Hey, what would you say is the uh, biggest lesson you guys took from the loss? You know, I I think that it, it's it's one of those where. Things weren't going the way we needed them to go early, and and we couldn't play ourselves out of the hole. That, that's what I talked about the most. We we couldn't get and and you go back and look at the tape and, and some of the plays that, that Wichita State made to increase were were incredible. You know, but that's what it takes to to get to a Final Four. You have to make those plays. And um, but I, I think the other thing is is I don't want guys to forget why we got in that position because we were playing at such a high level at the at the end of the year and and, and I think we know this and, and and I've said it before the NCAA tournament a lot of times about it is about getting on a roll at the right time and and um, you know we, we've had a couple halves here or there throughout the course that have, have been costly and you know the, the first 30 minutes of that game were just not what we needed there. Quickly, do you let go of losses like that? Do you let go quickly, or, or do you do you replay them for weeks afterwards, or whatever? I mean, obviously you're Years. busy and you're doing your recruiting yeah. and you're doing all this other stuff, but I mean, you. No, I I, I don't let them go. Um, I I can take you through every loss that has ended my season that I've been a head coach, and I can tell you why and how and. Um, Every, every single one of them. But I think the, the one thing you have to do is, is as hard as college basketball is today, if you don't take a deep breath at some point and enjoy it, you're not going to be effective, you know, the, the rest of the way. And, and um, you know, college basketball has is, is become about getting knocked down, getting back up, and, and you got to fight again. And, and I think that's the, uh, you know, one of the things this program, I mean, I don't, I think we, 
I think we lost two in a row this year, but we hadn't lost two in a row and like we had the nation's longest win streak of not losing. But those last ones, you never forget them. I mean, I, there was a play in that game early where there was a kick ball call. There was no kick ball called. We, we were scoring at the other end early in the game. It was right in front of our bench. You can see it. And um, so I can take you through the three fouls at the end of the first half, the three foul shots, and he said he warned him on the first one, and he wasn't in the game on the first one. So I can yeah. I can take you through everything that you want to know there. <laughs> I, I will tell you this, that, that was good uh, for me, having that on my computer this summer to watch flying, recruiting. You know, those those is what I do, and I'll keep watching and watching, and that's why I have such a vivid uh, remembering of what happened. That some of these guys <laughs> talked to them, but you won't let them forget the Wisconsin loss. How do you reinforce that? They said it's brought up a lot around the program right now. Well, that was a game where, um, you know, as a coach, I tried everything I could possibly try in the first half in that game. I, I tried kicking their butts, I tried loving them, I tried silent treatment, I tried breaking boards, I tried everything. And there just came a point where you said, hey, it's, it's not going to happen. We, we've, let's, let's get out of here as, as quick as we can, you know. And, you know, I, I think when we got home from that game, we had a long talk uh, about the future of our team. And, and from that point, they don't lose again until you know, so that that's something that I want in their minds of what happens, especially when when you're playing in the Big Ten. If you don't come ready to play, or, or I don't want to say ready to play, but you know, just competing, uh, those those things are going to happen. You guys are an older team this year. Compared yeah, to thank God, huh? <laughs> yeah, Whew. two seniors. We got two seniors this year. Have you noticed, like in practice, you don't have to have as many teaching moments or stop and explain? Yeah, quite honestly, I, I've caught myself. I I probably haven't done as good a job as I needed to do with Mark and Cameron, uh, just just in terms of kind of like you should know that. And then I catch myself saying, "There's no way possible that they would know that." Um, and then we kind of grab those guys. We've probably done more individual film work with them than we have uh, with the others. But I, I do like having an experienced team. Uh, you know, seven junior seniors, I think it is, is, is huge. How do you, every team has its own personality, uniqueness, whatever. How do you describe this team? You know, seven upperclassmen, rarely play. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So how would you describe this team? I don't know yet. Um, like I said, I, I've, I've liked... I've liked their energy, I've liked their cohesiveness, I've liked their intensity. Um, you know, attention to detail is gonna be something I'm always on, but um, I, I, I like our, our conditioning level, I like where we are physically. Um, you know, it, it's just the, the, the grind we're going through in terms of, of getting them, but you know, in terms of, a, of an identity, I don't know yet uh, what it will be. I asked six of your players like question. You know, I had the same one with Yeah. How do you get them to internalize that? These guys all come in here and score. And right. And they're all giving you that same answer. How do you do that? Yeah, I, I think that they know, I, I believe in it. And I, you know, I think one of the biggest things is showing guys when we play good defense, this is what happens for us in terms of, of what an effective basketball team we are. Um, and, and they're seeing that, you know, we're, we're, we're fast, we're, we can handle the ball, we're quick. Um, we, we've got to turn easy buckets uh, into points for us. And, and, and that has to be something that is kind of a calling card for this team. You mentioned Wichita State and which guys might have learned from that. Do you, you remind them as the season goes on from the, at appropriate moments? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I think, yeah, I mean, you know, we went through and, and drew the correlation. You're 29 and 8, and you can look at the eight losses, and, and there, was, there were common themes. You know, that was Jake Deeper's first job when he got here. I, I said, I want you to find out why we lost our eight games. And he gave me maybe the most detailed report I've ever seen in terms of his thoughts on why we lost the game, but there there was common bonds to us. So you know you you kind of you've got those moments because kids are they're smart they they know and uh, you can you can throw those out throughout the course. Your with that, 
on their face here? No, because I want people to know. Two years ago, Garrett was a guy that would rely on to get 20 points again last year to Sean. This year, I mean, obviously, he's the ball and score. Is he that guy, or is or is there a couple guys? Yeah, I, I think I'm, I'm kind of hoping there's going to be a couple guys. Uh, we, we've put a uh, we, we've put a big premium on score, shooting, offense, passing, um, probably more so than we have in the past. At, at, well, we've never got to practice as much as we have to this point yet. But um, you know, I, I just I'd, I'd like to have that that great balance if if you know. LaQuentin can get 20 points a game, great. But you know, if we could have a, hey, the best team we've ever had here was, you know, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, and, and 10. Um, but I, I, I think having balance with this team will be big. I asked Sam about this, and I don't think I was the first person that ever brought this name up to him. But Victor Oladipo was a guy who was a great defender and a dunk machine, and sort of built. A well-rounded all-around game and turned into an All-American. Mm -hmm. Is that a fair? Could Sam be that kind of player if he yeah. has that consistent jump shot? And yeah, I, I think so. I, I've said this. Um, you know, when 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 Sam begins to shoot the ball, and he was forty percent last year from three, uh, at, at a cons consistent level, I think he's got a chance to be one of the best to ever play here. Uh, I've, I've, I've always said that from day one because, you know, the, the one thing you look and, and statistically in practice as far as Sam Thompson wins and, and uh, you know, his winning percentage and the things we've done practice wise thus far is, is at a very, very high level. And, and um, you know, Sam is, is a guy that, that he wants to do whatever he can to, to help the team win. Uh, but, but, yeah, I would love to see him, you know, knock those down and, and, and beat that. Like I said, he's, he's shot the ball pretty well thus far. Is there anything he needed to change in his shot, or is it? Just no, I, I, I think a lot of it is is the repetition and, and getting Sam to shoot the right shot every single time. He'll he'll shortcut his his follow through, and and that's something we've we've been on him about since the the completion of last year. Hey, hey, Shannon Scott's one of the smaller guys on the floor. Yeah, he's a very good rebounder. Yeah. How is that? Why why is he so good? Well, I, I think this number one from the the point guard position, a lot of times he doesn't have a man to block out because most def uh, offensive rotations back to defense, the point guard goes back, uh, which was a lot why Evan Turner was a great rebounder when we played him at the point. But I, I think the second thing is he is uh, has a great knack for where the ball is going to come off. And he's, he's much more athletic than I think people honestly think that he is. He hides it very well. And um, yeah, I say, <laughs> I hit it, just didn't know where I put it when I played. Um, but I, I think he's, he's and you, you look at him, he's very, very strong too. I mean, he, he can take hits and, and keep going. The small lineup was something that you guys went to a lot down the stretch last year and had some pretty good success. And is that something that you think you'll use more this year? I, Ton of depth inside. Yeah, I, I do think so. I, I, I think that uh, you know we we had played with it last year early. Um, really didn't use it until it became a necessity uh, in a Northwestern game, I think here. Um, but yeah, we we probably spent a little bit more time at this juncture of the year than we had last year with it. But I, I like uh, just in terms of the the multiple aspects it, it provides for us. Is that is that like? You guard in the five, the same guard in the four. Yeah, or switch everything. And you know, when we were in it last year against Wisconsin, Aaron had Bergner, and they threw the ball out of bounds, and okay. you know. So, you, so I mean, obviously, you guys can, can cause problems on the offensive end with that, but you can with defend the too. Yeah, play defense can play team, team defense enough to use a lineup. Like right. That. Okay. Yeah. With, with the athleticism on your team, there's a lot of talk about maybe running a lot this year. What does that mean for your big guys? They got to go. They, in all seriousness, they they have to run. They they they've got to be runners, and, and and you know, getting them, and we've been able to show them some thus far of of when they go, good things happen because it, it really, uh, you know, it definitely creates spacing 
how much will that play into who gets on the floor? Maybe. Big piece Yeah. Yeah, I, I think so. And and you know, you look at Trey's body and and just uh, uh, you know, it, it, I stopped practicing the other day. It, like I said, my gosh, you, you're you're thin. And uh, I said, how much you weigh now? And you know, he's he's dropped probably I don't know 17 pounds, and it mirrors down in weight. Um, and and both guys are are really running the floor very well. To be my tenth year. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean it. it uh, yeah, it, it it doesn't have it's like 80 in dog years around here. I think. <laughs> and, uh, um, no, I, I I would say that uh, just the program that we've built and the way that we've built it, uh, just just in terms of of what's been accomplished here and and under our watch and and uh, you know all where we were when we came in and and I remember saying. To kids when we begin our recruiting process we're at rock bottom I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you we can't go to postseason play we've uh, you know I'm not gonna say that but uh, we were it just it wasn't good you know we, we had a like a 20% graduation rate I didn't know that till after I got here I, I mean it was like uh, things weren't good and, and to see today the the strides that we made and I know a lot of people just tie it to one thing and one thing only and that's winning and I, I like the way that we've won and, and the guys that we've won with. It's one thing to dig yourself out of rock bottom. You went from rock bottom to Greg and Mike to the final four in a pretty quick. Like, how does that transition happen? Well, you forgot a year. Right. Because the, the second year, yeah. we won the Big Ten outright, won 26 games. We were a two seed. And, and, and I've always said that that team – uh, is, is a, a team that, that will always be forgotten, but is number one in my mind in, in terms of what those guys were, were able to accomplish. And, and because everybody was only concerned about the next year because Greg, Michael, Daquan, David were coming in, they didn't even care about that season. And then these guys just kept winning and winning and winning. And, and um, you know, to uh, Terrence, Jaquel, James, and, and Matt, I, I still to this day, uh, owe those guys a lot, as, as well as Tony, Brandon, and Matt when when I first got here. You see those guys walking around with Fats Boys t-shirts, and I'm sure you've seen them. I mean, everyone from Jacquel and them to Carl. Right. Is that cool to you? Is that special? It, it is, because we, we had a special night. Um, my family threw me a surprise party I didn't know about, and it was the guys that I had coached here at my house one night this summer. and, and we had maybe one of the greatest nights of my life. Um, the the biggest thing I found out is these guys do listen because they were able to say things that I said. Um, I don't remember saying them in the tone that I said them, but uh, um, yeah, that was like a, a, a unique uh, summer evening that I, I had no idea what it was what was going on. And and uh, um, see, I, you know, those are those are the type of things that I'm probably most proud of that I can have a a, a Sunday afternoon this summer and and. James Sullinger and Jaquel Foster and Terrence Dow spend five hours at my house just kind of going through it. Those are, you go to bed at night saying, man, we've done this the right way. Ted, you talked earlier about how you're further ahead at this point than you usually are in mm -hmm. practice. And Glenn Zell mentioned that you're, you're putting in presses now that wouldn't have gone in until later in the season. What, how does that translate? Is that good? Yeah, well, we're not supposed to start practice till tomorrow. Well, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Typically, yeah. And um, I, I, what does that bring you? What does that bring you during the course of the season? Does that put in more than you've ever put in before. Yeah, but the, it comes to do you want to? Okay. Uh, you know what I'm saying? J just in terms of. of um, How much, how much do we want to get in in terms of, of what we're going to do? You know, the early start, excuse me, has really changed. I mean, we've practiced now, I think tomorrow will be our 13th practice. Um, and, and that's dating back into the September 15th, you know, for 40 minutes. We, we've calculated those, but it, it's, um, hey, normally we're starting tomorrow. It's our first practice, and, and away we go. Yeah. Does that allow you to figure out your team? Maybe, I, yeah, and I think about having seven uh, veterans back, yeah. it, it, you know, we're maybe a little like we will introduce something and guys like, oh, okay, that's Pop, 
yep. Now, you know, then they're like, we're going to put the counter in, we're going to put rub into, and, and they, they remember, but it just takes a little time. But, um, and, and Cam and Mark have been, you know, they ask a lot of questions, and, and I said this, I, I've caught myself a couple times just thinking they should know what we're doing, and I, and I got to back up and, and make sure we can, I have a hard time slowing down at times. So does Timo look better, or maybe it'll look good sooner, maybe than a, another two? Yeah. yeah, but but understand this: everybody's got the same start we do. Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it, it is a little bit for us to say, "Hey, we've got this and this," and probably everybody else does too. Has it helped the coaches at all from the standpoint of not having to pack so much into four weeks? Um, I think you know we're not we're not through it yet, but I, I think that it it ultimately could. The, the biggest thing I I found that you've got to guard against is. Uh, what's enough and how much mm -hmm. because it, it, it is uncharted waters to us um, you know just just in terms of, of um, you know injuries and, and, and that sort of thing uh, you know, we don't have a lot of guys for practice and we do practice extremely hard so you know being able for me to just say hey we're done and like we're still I'm like no no we're done we, we've got enough in, and, and I have to do that every now and then. You talk about the veterans. In a tie game, who's taking the last shot? Well, Aaron and Q right now are the two that made the last two shots from uh, Iowa State to Arizona, so they would be at the forefront. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, so much factors in there of, of hot hand and, and, you know, what we're – do we need a two, do we need a three? Um, but – those two are pretty good at it. Does it help? Does it make you feel good that when I ask each of them who's taking the last shot, they say I am? You know, uh, it doesn't make for a good huddle in the last <laughs> five seconds. No, but no, it does. It, I, I want them confident. I want them feeling uh, all the work that they've done and, and uh, is, is going to pay off for them. I, I, I hope that they feel good about where they are today because I, I like where this team is today. And how much does their performance up to that point in that game, say two is four for five and Aaron's over five, you know, from three and you need a three? Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's a that's a gut call, to be honest with you. And, and you look, you know, those guys were in the in the fray of, of both those plays that we're talking about. Um, and, and Aaron, I thought, made two great reads on both of them. Yeah, but bringing in Chris Sparks, what, what does a – what does a guy like that or a position like that do to help in the recruiting efforts or, I don't know, what's... Well, in, in essence, you, you've got a young man who is, is A, very intelligent, uh, B, he's, he's, a, he's a, a great person. Um, he's, he's very grateful to, to be here. Um, you know, he understands the technology side of things. He's, he's been in the private business sector. Um, you know, he... he he has a great vision of maybe the things that I don't so much see in terms of uh, phones and you know all that stuff. I don't tweets and yeah, I don't do that. But is, I mean, in, in, in this day and age, with how seventeen-year-olds are and social media and all that kind of thing, do you sort of do you need to like be getting the brand out there or spreading the word or, or living in their world? Yeah, I. I I, I think you do. I mean, we're we're doing just fine with the way we're doing it. But um, you know, the other thing I like about bringing a guy like Chris in is, is in my mind, it's extremely hard today because of all the rules to get into coaching, and and you're you're helping a young guy have an opportunity to to get in at the ground level and and kind of see everything that that goes in, and and hopefully, hey, he wants to be a college basketball coach. We're going to be able to provide him that opportunity as well because it, it just um, you know, you don't have the GAs like I started in 1990 with Tate's Lock. Uh, just it's, it's not there the way it used to be. Yeah. You talked about the, you know, having this veteran team and how that's kind of a relief, but you've also had the you know, super freshman, for mm -hmm. a better term. You know, which do you think, what, do you, what are the pros and cons of having those types of teams? I mean, you know, the, the Conley Odin year, you guys played a Florida team. Was a veteran team. Obviously, they were talented. Mm -hmm. but, you know, do you think it's, do you think there's better you know, 
pros and cons of both? Or? Yeah, I, there are definitely pros and cons, but I think that the, the, the pros favor the experience side. In, in, in college basketball day. I think experience is something that is, is um, you can't teach it. Um, you know, and, and when you get those, those experienced teams, it may, you know, you look at like Jared's freshman year, um, you got a team that goes 34 and three. You got one guy off that team that's, that's playing in the NBA now, and that's Jared. Um, I'm not saying that wasn't a real talented team, but it's it's quite remarkable what you know. Uh, we go back the next year with with a, not a well. I guess William would have been the only senior, and and you go to the Final Four, and and once again you've only got one guy that's playing in the NBA now. Um, you know, every now and then I think you get that Odin Conley Cook type class, and and you see that periodically now. Kentucky had it a few years ago with just great freshmen and they were able to win it. You know, we get into a situation where we're playing a team that's already won it and everybody came back. That's how my luck works. <clears throat> but um, I, I think that's the, there, there's a trade-off, but but those teams, those guys don't come along real often. I, I, you know, obviously love having the great ones, but I also love having experience. So ideally, if you were to, you know, in a perfect world, would you balance it more towards, you know, maybe a couple real good freshmen and then the leader, you know, the leaders, guys that have been around for a while. Mm -hmm. Is that how you... I, I would love to have that, yes. Yeah, I mean, I, I would love, and I think we had that uh, when, when you had John Diebler, David Lighty, and Dallas Lauderdale as your, your core seniors, uh, and then you had Jared and, and, and Aaron and Deshaun who were freshmen. Boy, that was a, a great balance. And, you know, then you had a great junior in William Buford, third all-time leading scorer in school history. That was... Um, a, a great mix. I, I, I loved coaching that team. We saw Coach Meyer take the plunge and get on Twitter. We're going to see a Brad Motto account anytime soon? I don't think so. Um, I don't know what it, I, I, I hate to say that, I don't know what it is. Uh, you post things. Just like texting? <laughs> it's just like texting. Just like but to texting. everybody. But to everybody. Recruits. But I don't want to talk to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And they don't want to be on Twitter. Yeah, okay. <laughs> we follow you. Yeah. Yeah, that's. Yeah. What is it? Uh, do, yeah. The, what is it? The movie uh, Dude Day? The guy says, I got 93 friends on Facebook. Ten of them are pending. Uh, it's just like, no, I don't. <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I don't need that. Good to go. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Dan.